Hi folks, here are some more Chapter 8 problems. A 9,300 kilogram boxcar is traveling eastbound at 15.0 meters per second. It strikes a second stationary car, which is at rest. After the collision, the pair of cars move off at a speed of 6.00 meters per second. What is the mass of the second car? So here's what's going on. Remember, all momentum problems are like diet commercials. There is a before and there is an after. So let's draw our before and after. So we have a train boxcar and we have two of them. One that has a mass of car one is 9,300 kilograms and it has a velocity eastbound of 15 meters per second to the east. It strikes a secondary car which is at rest. Mass of car 2 is unknown to us, but velocity of car 2 before we start is 0. Afterwards, the two cars couple together and they have one combined velocity of 6 meters per second. And the question is, what is the original mass of car 2? So the big idea is the momentum before will be equal to our momentum after. And for each object in a momentum problem, we have an m and a v. So mass 1, velocity 1, plus mass 2, velocity 2, will equal mass 1, velocity 1, after, plus mass 2, velocity 2, after. Now, object 2, car 2, up here, has zero velocity in the beginning, and because it has zero velocity in the beginning, this whole term is going to go to zero. Excuse me. <coughs> because that's going to go to zero, that's going to simplify this whole part of the equation. Also, on the right-hand side, this is a combined velocity afterwards, so I can factor out velocity after times mass 1 plus mass 2. So let's go ahead and do this. And maybe I don't want to factor that out. Hmm, Mary got a little carried away with her factoring. So maybe I'm going to leave that as is. We're going to see which form, when I start putting numbers in, I'm going to want. So let's put some numbers in. Mass 1, 9,300 kilograms times velocity 1. 15 meters per second. So that's everything on the left hand side. On the after side, I think I'm going to leave it in this top form. I think that's going to make the most sense since we don't know mass 2. Mass 1 is going to be 9300 kilograms. Velocity 1 is 6 meters per second plus mass 2, my unknown, times velocity after 6 meters per second. Now we're going to pull this down. 9300 times 15. 9300 times 15. This is going to be 139,500 units for momentum are kilogram meters per second. It does not have a different name. 9,300 times 6 is going to give me 55,800 kilogram meters per second plus m2 times 6 meters per second. Now I'm going to solve for m2. To do that, I have to get this on the other side. So I'm going to divide, excuse me, subtract 55,800 from both sides. 55,800 subtract from both sides. And when I do that, that will cancel. And on the left side, I'm going to end up with 83,700 kilogram meters per second will equal, and this is going to be brought down, m2 times 6 meters per second. Uh, to solve for m2, I'm going to divide both sides by 6, divide both sides by 6, 
And when I do that, M2 is going to be equal to 13,950 kilograms. And I'm going to double check. Um, if I round that off to three sig figs, that's going to be 14,000 kilograms. And that's going to be the mass of car two. All right, pretty spiffy. All right, let's do one more problem. Let's do number four. A two-stage rocket moves in space at a constant velocity of 4,900 meters per second. The two stages are then separated by a small explosive charge placed between them. The purpose of the charge is not to accelerate the rocket, simply to separate the upper and lower stages. Immediately after the explosion, the velocity of the 1,200 kilogram upper stage is 5,700 meters per second in the same direction as before the explosion. What is the velocity of the 2400 kilogram lower stage immediately after the explosion? So again, we're going to have before and we are going to have after. So before the explosion, here's what I've got. I have got my two-stage rocket. So I've got an upper and lower stage. I'm going to call this mass 1 for the upper stage. I maybe call it MU for upper and ML for mass of the lower. Um, the velocity of both are 4,900 meters per second and in one direction. The mass of the upper stage, let's see, immediately after the explosion, the 20, 1,200 kilogram upper stage, the mass of the upper stage is 1,200 kilograms, and the velocity of the lower stage, so the mass of the lower stage, is 2,400 kilograms. Okay. After, here's what happens. We have our two pieces, and they have been separated. So my mass of my upper is now going to be traveling at 5,700 meters per second. So that's the velocity of my upper stage. I want to know what is going to be the velocity of the mass of my lower. I want to know what is the velocity of the lower stage after the explosion. So here goes nothing. Okay, one more time. Conservation of momentum. Momentum before is going to be equivalent to momentum after. And momentum before is going to be mass of the upper velocity of the upper plus mass of the lower velocity of the lower. This is going to be after mass of the upper velocity of the upper after mass of the lower velocity of the lower after. Okay, mass of the upper and lower of beforehand can be kind of this, because they have one combined velocity, this can be factored out. So this is going to be velocity times their combined mass of upper and lower. So let's do this whole left-hand side first. And this whole left-hand side, we're going to have the combined velocity. And I just need my numbers so I can see them. I need to see my numbers. It's 4,900 meters per second, 4,900 meters per second, times the combined mass of 1,200 kilograms plus 2,400 kilograms. So that's going to be the momentum before. So let's go ahead and do the math on that. 1,200 plus 2,400 equals times 4,900. So on the left-hand side, that's going to be a big number. I'm going to go get scientific notation. So I have 1.764 times 10 to the 7th kilogram meters per second. That's my momentum before. And that's going to be equal to the mass of the upper, mass of the upper, which is going to be 1,200 kilograms times the velocity of the upper, 5,700 meters per second, plus the mass of the lower, 2,400 
kilograms times the velocity of the lower. So let's multiply these two together, see what we get. 1,200 times 5,700. I end up with this being 6.84 times 10 to the 6th kilogram meter per second. And now we're just going to pull these down. So this number just comes down, 1.764 times 10 to the 7th kilogram meters per second. And this comes down 2,400 kilograms times velocity of the lower. To get this alone, I am going to subtract this from both sides. So minus 6.84 times 10 to the 6th kilogram meters per second from both sides. And let's see what I get, 1.764 to the 7th. I end up with 1.081 times 10 to the 7th equals 2400 kilograms times the velocity of the lower. So the velocity of the lower is going to be 1.081 times 10 to the 7th divided by 2400 kilograms, units on the top, kilogram meters per second. Divide that by 2400 and the velocity of the lower will be 4,500 meters per second. And that is going to be in the same direction that it was originally going. Alrighty, alright, see you later.